Welcome to this Gold Coast Light Rail Stage 4 V2I Real-Time User Guide. Follow the internal web link and use the provided login credentials to access the switchboard and click the play button to start the application in the cloud. Please wait a couple of minutes for the cloud server to launch and then follow the displayed hosting web address when it appears. You may once again be required to sign in with your credentials to start hosting. As you can see in the info widget in the top right corner, you are now logged in as host of the session and in control. Click on the connection bar icon to view your own live internet statistics. And the manage user menu shows all registered users and enables you to add more users with hosting rights to the system. The session icon on the right shows who is currently connected, along with options to hand over control and see individual user statistics when sharing a session. To add people to the session, click on invite user add an email address, and then copy and share the invitation link via email or messenger. To access the 3D scene, simply press the play button. Once you see an overview of the site, you can start interacting. The menu bar on the left lets you access everything. From the top, you can select from three explore modes, various measurement tools, snapshot and video capture, the time of day solar tool, as well as individually toggle all the 2D and 3D content layers that make up the scene. The zoom bar is one way to zoom out or in, and the question mark icon in the bottom left corner is always handy to display navigation hints for the explore mode you are currently in. In the default orbit mode, simply click and hold the left mouse button and move your mouse across the screen to adjust the view angle. In addition to the slider, you can also use your mouse wheel to zoom. To pan across, move your cursor over the target area and click the right mouse button once to move towards it. By using these commands together, you can conveniently explore the entire site from a high level perspective. To look at areas in more detail, select Drone in the Explore menu. In Drone mode, you can still click and hold the left mouse to look around and use the W, A, S and D keys on your keyboard to fly the drone. Hold the space bar to increase your altitude and the control key to decrease it. Holding the shift key accelerates. To return back to the initial overview, click the return to start button at the bottom of the screen. When selecting walk in the explore menu, you will be prompted to choose a location and double click there to land on the ground. Here, you can move around just like the drone and press the space bar to jump. If you're ever unsure how to move, the navigation help icon is always right there in the corner. Click the measurement icon to access the relevant tool, and click within the scene once to start a measurement, and again for the second measurement point. To measure length, click the right mouse button once after the second point to complete the measurement. To measure paths, Simply add as many waypoints as desired and complete the path by clicking the right mouse button after the last measurement point. Measurement overlays scale with distance, and you can click on the value to either edit or delete the measurement. With the Area Measurement tool, you can right click to automatically complete the shape after the last measurement point has been set. For the Height tool, use the intersecting lines as a guide when needed. To measure a radius, place the center point and drag the radius out, clicking once to lock it in. To render a perspective, click on the camera icon and select a resolution to take a snapshot without the user interface shown. The various markup tools can be used to draw on the perspective and add text annotations. The snapshot will be saved when you exit the window and you can take any number of additional snapshots, add more markups, and view previously taken angles and comments. Your snapshot gallery will be lost when you restart the application, so please make sure to access your snapshots before you leave to either save individual images, generate all into a PDF brochure, or email the brochure out directly. Saving them will immediately download the files to your device. Underneath the snapshot buttons, you'll find the record video button, which will commence recording your screen interactions after a three second preparation timer. 
You can then create the desired camera path and press the button at the top to stop and review the recording. The video playback enables you to choose whether to save the video on your local files or to close and discard it. The sun icon in the menu bar brings up the solar tool adjustment slider, so you can move the sun across the sky for a more accurate simulation of a specific time of day or desired atmosphere. The slider by default displays at the summer solstice, but can be switched to winter solstice. Clicking the list icon in the menu bar reveals the various 2D and 3D content layers. Tick each item to display it and explore the scene, like this corridor overlay. Unticking an item will disable it again. Expand the Tags drop-down and enable the Station Tags to activate shortcuts to each station. Clicking on a tag will take you over to the station, allowing for easy navigation along the rail corridor. Enabling the hotspots in the menu will display icons in the same locations as on the Web360 panorama map, and clicking an icon will move to the same position and angle as the corresponding web hotspot. You can look around and click on neighbouring tags in the vicinity to move to another hotspot. Under the photogrammetry drop-down, Impact Areas displays which areas will be affected by the development and the Surrounding tab toggles the lower resolution photogrammetry base adjacent to the high resolution data. Under the GCLR Stage 4 menu item, turning off Activation will remove vehicles and pedestrians, and the Landscaping button controls project-related foliage. All layers can be controlled individually to create the desired scene. The Intersection Options button automatically moves you to the Intersection Upgrade location and displays the design concepts. By removing the tick from the GCLR Stage 4 menu item altogether, you can view the currently existing real-world environment as captured by a photogrammetry data along the entire corridor, and layer in the Stage 4 design data as required. To exit the application, simply close the browser tab and shut down the application via the switchboard.